Workshop number two has needed a new table saw for a while and after around two years of dilemma I eventually bought an Evolution Rage 5S saw. This is a direct replacement for my FAR table saw that I bought cheap from a supermarket a few years ago. I have contemplated bringing my Dewalt here over the last few years, but what really sold me about the Rage 5 was the wheel trolley that it sits on. And eventually this year the price seemed to stabilise. Over the lockdown periods they seem to be crazily priced. I have seen them priced at almost £700, so when Leroy Merlin had them on offer down in the southwest of France, I decided to pick one up. I had a 10% loyalty voucher code, so the final price was €278, Euros, around about £250. And for that money and the size of the box, it seems like you get a really good deal. The packaging is very robust. The table saw is pretty much complete in the pack, and then all the accessories are all strategically placed around it. It took quite a while to break into the box. And there is the main unit. This saw does provide a few more options than just cutting timber. I don't tend to cut a lot of metal items. However, as shown later in this video, I do actually seem to cut some timber with metal objects within them, mainly screws. Within the packaging, there is a second box. And the second box contains all the small parts, as well as the instructions. Now I'm not going to provide a step-by-step -step guide to putting the thing together. There is plenty of them on YouTube and I'll link a couple of them in the description. But there does seem to be about 8,000 parts in the box. And just as I started to put the whole thing together, there was a huge downpour and I ended up having to rush inside with all the parts. So I pretty much ignored the instructions and turned all the smaller components into larger components. Then the following morning collected all the tools I required which was a screwdriver, socket set and a soft hammer in order to fit the foldable legs onto the frame of the saw that I'd started the previous evening. I initially just finger tightened all the fixings because I wanted to ensure everything was in the right place and works before I tighten them down. As a side note, my wife was really thrilled that I'd used the kitchen countertops as my workbench. And this is a fully installed folding leg mechanism. Also note a partially constructed joinery project behind me that maybe I'll share with you one day once I've managed to finish it. Once I was happy that the legs worked, I could then stand the whole thing up. And for the first time, get a good look at the mechanism to move the blade up and down and to tilt it over to 45 degrees. To raise the blade, you turn the wheel to the right. To lower it, you turn it to the left. And to move it to an angle, up to 45 degrees, you push the wheel into the body of the saw and engages into a rack and pinion drive. And eventually, my wife got her way and I was evicted from the house and into the garden. And as it was the first time I deployed the legs, I found it a bit tricky at first. Maybe it was something to do with the slippers.
but eventually I got there. With the stand sorted, I just now needed to fine tune the table. First of all, I needed to level it. It was rocking on one of the feet, so I just needed to screw these down using a level. It's only since I've been making these YouTube videos that I've realized I'm bald. The crown guard was fitted onto the top of the riving knife. This has a spring-loaded cap so it's quite easy to remove and reattach. Wherever possible, I do like to make my cuts with the crown guard attached. There's a short length of dust extraction hose that fits onto the back of the crown guard and also fits onto the back of the saw where the dust extraction port is. There's actually a little bracket to locate it onto the back of the extension table but for some reason my bracket seemed to be missing out of the packaging. So I shall have to contact Evolution to see if they'll send me a spare part. Now one thing I didn't realise when I bought this saw is that it came with a sliding table. I really like this feature. The mitre gauge actually locks into the groove very securely. A lot of saws, my DeWalt saw included, is a little bit sloppy so you never feel like you're making a good accurate cut. I loved it so much, I got a little bit carried away here, going backwards and forwards. There's also a little clamp that fits onto the top, so you can really make sure your timber is held down nice and tight, and the whole thing twists up to 45 degrees in either direction. Both wings of the table extend outwards to make the surface area larger. The left one only goes out a few inch, but the right hand side one extends quite away and along with the fence it makes cutting large sheets easier. But first you need to level the tables with the actual saw bench top. So yeah I'm just using a level to dial in the top and once that's done it slides really easily. The fence seems really robust too and I like the way that it extends the full width of the table top and actually locates in tracks both back and front. It's a little bit like my DeWalt saw, and much, much better than the old far saw that I'm replacing. So after all this setting up, I thought I should plug it in and just make sure the actual thing worked. Of course, it worked beautifully. And it was finally time to introduce it to the workshop and prepare to cut some timber. Currently I'm laying a new patio at the back of the house and although it's mainly concrete there is two decking portions that cover the sanitary system so the job in hand was to cut down the decking boards and some joists. The joists were mainly recycled so as stated earlier there was actually full of screws although I tried to take as many of them out as I could. And just a last piece of setup I'd actually forgot to square the blade to the frame so here I was just dialing in to make sure it was square. And, as I was in the garden, I didn't really need to do this, but I was just curious to see whether my little shop vac fitted the dust port, because one day I'll get round to that cyclone separator. Now the first cut was just a straightforward rip down the length of the decking board. That was perfect. The second cut was a little more tricky, I had to actually freehand a wedge shaped cut and for this I needed some nourishment. Incidentally the saw on its stand is quite high, much higher than anything I could use for an outfeed table, so that's a future project. Now the next cut was with a piece of used 3x3. And previously there'd been some screws in these and I was sure I got all the screws out. But actually, when I looked at the offcuts later, I could see it actually sawn straight through some screws. If that had been any other blade, it would have been ruined. But full marks to evolution on the production of that blade. The next cut was with the sliding table. As I said, I really like this feature. And then an even harder cut was to use a 45 degree mitre on some 6 by inch and a half deck board.
Now away from the decking, I just added another few pieces of timbers cut to finish off some other projects. And here I'm just making sure the fence is actually in line with the blade before I make these cuts. The process of undoing the bolts at the end of the fence, squaring it with the blade and then just tightening the bolts down. Here I'm ripping down some laminate floor. I'd done a couple of trial cuts just to make sure it weren't too splintery before I did this but it seemed to cut fine and much better than the jigsaw that I'd been using previously. And again using the sliding table function I use this to cross cut some skirting boards to length and then to actually move the blade over to 45 degrees and cut some more to length. I'm obviously that happy with the saw I seem to be singing a little song to myself. The saw cut these mitres perfectly. I was really happy with the results. Finally, just a couple of little niggles. Firstly, with the crown guard on, the fence won't get tight to the blade. I think you can get within about an inch. T to make cuts finer than that, you need to put this little, this little rip extension on, which it's a bit cheap. I think I'll make myself some kind of sacrificial fence just to get over this. And secondly, and I've not filmed this, but cutting some joinery grade timber later, it was a bit raggy. Now I don't know if that's because I've been cutting plastics and, and screw heads, but I think I will invest in a better blade, probably a Saxton because of the board diameter, for really good quality cuts. And finally, using a bit of plain inch timber, I just made a little cover for a cable that was running down the wall. And that was it. Time to put the saw to bed for another night. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And here is another couple of videos that you might like to watch.